Broken down cars and RVs line the street next to Nick Johnston's home in southeast Portland. I would say that it definitely takes a toll on us because we don't know who's going to be outside of our house. I mean, He's like, compassionate, right? yes. Yeah, definitely. But after months of headaches, including trash, drugs, and all kinds of late night chaos, Nick says he and others have had enough. I know that our neighbors feel the same way that we do. Um, you know, you got to understand people's situations, but there's also a point where it's like, okay, our safety is at risk here. Yeah. In the first seven months of this year, Portland residents filed more than 3,800 complaints with the city about abandoned vehicles, illegally parked cars, and debris in the roadway. That's a 107% increase from the same period last year. I don't see it getting any better. Neighbor Jerry LaDuke, who's lived in the Lentz neighborhood for 40 years, argues this growing problem on our streets can't be swept away. Really, it's, it's just like the tides coming in, the tides going back out. When you see the garbage that's picked up, you know, dropped off, picked up, cars, trucks, you name it. And then it never seems to totally end. There is an alternative. Several cities, including Vancouver, have created safe parking spaces so people living in their cars or RVs have a safe and legal place to stay. It's a lot safer than being out on the street, so at least for me anyways. Michael Helms still has chalk marks in the tires of his RV after ringing up hundreds of dollars in parking tickets and being forced to move from one spot to the next. It's hard to try to transition from trying to find a job and then just leaving your stuff out there because potentially it's either going to get towed or it's going to get ripped off or it's going to get broken into. Vancouver's safe parking zone set up at an old C-Tran bus transit center holds about 50 cars, RVs and trailers. There are portable toilets, hand washing stations and garbage cleanup. We want to keep it clean and keep it nice and everybody be happy about it, you know. Residents must follow strict rules like no drugs or alcohol. The goal is to provide stability so people like Dale Moon can eventually find permanent housing. Well, last past year I've been going up from uh, sleeping in a pickup in the cab to a camper and then to a camper to a motorhome. In the short term, this safe parking area gives people a secure place to store their stuff. Yeah, mine's, mine's the one with the pumpkin, of course. <laughs> Instead of spending right all day looking for a place to park, they can focus on finding work or the support they need. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It also helps alleviate some of the stress between neighbors and strangers parked on their street. You uh, can't sleep very well because uh, you never know when at any time someone can knock on your door and say, hey, you can't be here. you got to leave right now. Similar programs have also been set up in Eugene and Beaverton. What is it that makes this location desirable for you folks? Well, it's, it's quiet, uh, sort of private, especially where our, our parking program is. Dr. Vernon Baker, director of Just Compassion East Washington County, says there's a healthy waiting list for the 15 safe parking spots scattered across five locations in Beaverton. We're seeing more and more people who are, who are gainfully employed, uh, but they just don't have enough to move into a house or to an apartment, so therefore they're living in their vehicles. Baker fears the end of Oregon's eviction moratorium will force more people out of their homes and onto the street. I think we're going to see a whole lot more people living in their vehicles. Portland City Commissioner Dan Ryan had proposed using the vast Portland Expo Center parking lot as a safe parking space for cars and RVs, but Metro, which owns the lot, said no. Instead, the regional government offered use of a grassy ditch area that would take $1.5 million to redevelop. Talks are still underway. It gets out of hand. For neighbors like Nick Johnston, this problem yeah, can't be ignored. The mess outside his home needs to be cleaned up, and people living in their cars and RVs need a better spot to park. I think that the residential areas are, need to be kept safe, and they need to be kept uh, up to a certain level of um, cleanliness. Yeah, definitely.